Hello everyone, it's Kureko here, and welcome to the first devlog of Crynon. In a nutshell, Crynon is a game engine made with Swift and the Metal Graphics API. It tries to support most of the biggest features modern game engines have, like high fidelity graphics and physics, along with some unique capabilities that I'll tell you about later in the video. The first time I'm going to go over how I got Crynon to the point where it is today, and what are the forces that led me to this journey. So, first of all, why did I even make my own game engine, and not use something like Unity, Godot or Unreal Engine? Well, I've tried them, but they aren't quite what I'm looking for right now. Actually, I did use Unreal Engine for many years and multiple projects, and I can definitely say it's great. It is, in my opinion, the most intuitive to use out of the big three, and it has many great features, especially in terms of graphics. However, I'm not making a game right now, but rather working on the technologies needed to make one. While I do still definitely enjoy making stories and high-level game stuff, I've also grown into like low-level coding much more. Being able to harness the power of fast silicon in today's computers and making fancy features like huge voxel worlds really intrigues me. My choice of using Swift and Metal was quite obvious. I use a Mac, so Metal is really the only option in terms of graphics APIs, and I found it really great anyway. Finding documentation is sometimes difficult, because it is not as well used as, say, OpenGL, but oh, is the debugger great. Before I began working on the current kernel engine, I made a well smaller experiment with Swift and Metal to learn the basics. I knew if I went straight in, I'd just make a mess, so I took my time getting comfortable with all the new concepts. Actually, at this point, all my experience with coding was just from one code prototype, because in Unreal Engine I had always used blueprints. Thankfully, lots of my knowledge from visual programming transferred over and I managed to learn quite fast. I began my first test about one and a half years ago with the help of 3 times Metal Game Engine tutorial series. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. The first few tries were quite bad and after a few weeks I quit for a long time. It took me over 6 months to give a metal another try, but this time I only made it for a week. Only in 2023 have I actually managed to make a building the engineer routine. I worked with test 11 and 12 in the spring. The earlier 10 tests were just rendering a 2D triangle in different colors. But with test 11 I went much further. I did 3D graphics, phone shading, user input and much more. Test 12, on the other hand, added features like shadows, HDR display, and an appear to occlusion, although in very rough forms. After I completed the first 12, I began working on Metal Engine 13, which was the name of Crynon until I recently changed it. I began building from the same base as the other test, except that I literally didn't. I had used storyboards for the UI in the tests, but this time I wanted to use Swift UI right from the start. I'm not interested in making any UI systems, so Swift UI is a natural choice, because it allows me to create a clean interfaces fast. Progress in the beginning was quite slow, because of WWDC happening right then, which meant that I played around with the newly announced features. And after that I worked on new concepts for this channel, so that also took time during summer. But after a while I managed to get back on track with the engine. In the background you can see uh, some footage of the development. Major enhancements over the previous test 12 are for example, change patency, more advanced input system with controller supports, and a custom physics engine. Yes, you heard that right, a custom built physics engine. It is certainly valid to ask why, in this case. Why not just use some ready-made physics library, like any reasonable person? Well, in my case, I want to have the entire engine be completely custom, so it doesn't need any dependencies. The other reason is that I want to get better at coding. Nikkei Physics Engine is not the easiest of tasks, so it has felt well as an indicator for me. And don't get me wrong, the physics engine is nowhere near finished, nor is it ever going to be anywhere as good as the libraries I could have used. But still, I think it was worth it, because honestly it is actually surprisingly simple to create one, if you aren't too worried about the minor details of course. Last changes before the Alpha 0.1 release were renaming the Crinion and making the project a package so that it can actually be used to make games. Name is something that I've used in many game projects in the past, but none of them made much progress. Now I'm happy because last month's irony is released Crinion version 0.1, which means that I've finally broken the curse. 
Don't ask me where the name actually originated from, it just came to my mind randomly a few years ago. One of my New Year's resolutions was that I'd release a game during this year. Well, my plans of course changed already in February, when I began working on the engine. Later I realized though that I could just actually use Crynon to make the game I had promised myself to make. So after finishing with the first version of Crynon, I began working on Endosymbiosis. It's a small and simple game that utilizes Crynon's features. The gameplay is that you shoot a shell with bacteria which then start to live in symbiosis, defending themselves from enemies or changing environmental causes. Idea for this I got from my biology class, because incorporating studies into programming is quite a fun idea in my opinion. But I still had to make many changes to Crynon during the development of endosymbiosis, it has now proven to be ready to use for simpler projects like this. If you're interested, I'll provide a download link for Endosymbiosis in the description. Although I must warn you, the installation project is a bit of a hassle because I haven't signed the game. Now that the first version of Crynon and Endosymbiosis are complete, I think I'll take it a bit easier for the rest of the year and focus on other things in life. But when the next year arrives, you can expect me to be working on the 0.2 Alpha, which will bring in many new advancements to the engine. Some features I have planned are for example better shadows with cascading shadow maps, normal maps, screen space ambient occlusion or SSAO, audio playback and significant improvements to the physics engine. The allow creation of much more advanced games with things like walking, which the current physics engine just can't handle yet. I think a new demo game with a bit more interesting world would also be quite nice. I'll also be posting the next devlog when the update is finished. After that, the plans are not as clear. I do have some ideas, but there isn't much set in stone yet. This is because I just don't know in what direction I want the engine to evolve in. I might go for a FPS engine for Portal's time games, or maybe specialize on procedural terrain generation and make something like Kappa Space Program with more detailed planets. Who knows yet? All I know is that I don't want to make a generic engine, but something with unique aspects, like the asp aforementioned terrain generation. I think any games with procedural terrain generation still to this day are quite lacking in terms of what could be done. They usually consist of some layered noise and are often just height maps. There could be so much more complex systems with actually interesting explorable locations. You might know how games like No Man's Sky or Starfield have nearly infinite planets, but then when you visit them, they don't feel that different from each other. And even if you find something different, it still doesn't compare to what you have in the real world. Uh, I think the best example of actually interesting generation is Minecraft. Yes, there are also lots of uh, similar looking places, but also some really intriguing ones. In that game you can actually find some cool places that make you want to build a base there. Taking this to a whole new level where you might set up outposts in breathtaking landscapes on planets across the solar system just sounds so cool. I mean, take a look at these pictures from Mars. Those jagged cliffs and ravines are so much cooler than anything in the procedurally generated worlds. And also, the level of detail in the small rocks and such. Anyways, I'll be updating the roadmap on Trello, so you can follow that if you'd like. Or wait for more devlogs as I'll be covering new plans here on this channel. So some of you might be wondering if it's possible to try out Crynon, but the answer is no, not at this time. I've decided to keep Crynon closed source for now, because again I didn't really know what to do with it yet. And even if you got to use it, there's no documentation at this time, so it's not really usable anyway. But to be clear, I may very well open it up later if there's enough interest. Personally, I'll focus on making the engine itself, so I don't find myself using it on any actual game anytime soon. But anyways. This is Kriner, my game engine. It has been quite a journey to get here and I'm very glad that I actually pushed through all the annoyances in the way. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you found it at least somewhat interesting. And if you did, perhaps consider subscribing. But hey, until next time. Bye.